SinCity version 1.7. SinCity works with Blender 2.80 and 2.81. That is true for all add-ons working in 2.80 because 2.81 did not introduce breaking changes on the Python side. The Add menu has been updated and reorganized to take into account the addition of terrain features. With the procedural map node, you have several new options and controls for even more varied and interesting noises. You have a new noise type, ridged multifractal, and a new noise subtype, Voronoi crackle. For ridged multifractals, you have two new controls, offset and gain. A parameter has been removed, value add, when you wanted to add a given value to the noise. This is now done in a much more practical way using a new node type, map math, with the add operation that we'll see very shortly. You can clamp the positions of the requested values to the 0 to 1 range. It's a bit hard to explain, but easy to understand with the help of the also new scale map node that scales noises around their center or from a corner. If we add the scale map node and scale the nose up, we start requesting values that are outside the standard 0 to 1 range of positions. In that case, should the noise be extended like this? or should it stay within its range, like this. Both options can be useful, depending on your needs. You can also invert a noise, that means low values become high values, and vice versa. Though when inverting a procedural map, sometimes you'll see just black, that means all values are negative, and so totally black. To see this kind of values in an image, you'll have to use a new option in the map to Blender image node, normalize. That lets you see a noise no matter its values. It maximizes the contrast of the noise values, so they are better visible in an image. But this is purely for seeing the noise. Its values remain the same. I greatly enhanced maps and their manipulations. Now you can perform operations on them like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so on, thanks to the map math node. To help with that, you can also use constant value maps. They always output the same value. In addition to the previously mentioned scale map node, you can also translate maps. The first features from Scene Terrain are back and now integrated directly in the SynCity add-on, in a fully node-based workflow. In time, there'll be one single add-on for a tighter integration between the cities and the terrains. You can create terrain-shaped data from a map. Any map will do, so a procedural one, an image-based one, or a mix of both, as you need. The data is output as a new socket type. Once you have the shaped data, you can use it for other nodes, like the scatter layout, as we'll see just after that, but also as input to the new terrain grid mesh node. More features will be added progressively, such as terrain populations and materials. The next direct use of terrains is to put cities on them. You can now put the simplest type of cities, the randomly scattered ones, on any terrain. Grid-based cities don't have that capability yet, but will in the future. Previously, you had a single map input to control both the density and the size of the buildings at the same time. That means you always had large buildings in dense areas only. You can now control them separately. This lets you control where you want more or less buildings to filter out parts of the terrain that should not allow any buildings at all. While at the same time to give them different sizes, independently of the terrain or not. Each map can fit the layout area or the terrain area if one is provided. When a map fits to the provided terrain, it is stretched to fit the entire area of the terrain and not the area of the building's layout. It is especially necessary 
when the terrain area and the building's area are not the same, and when the buildings are filtered based on the terrain features, such as at low altitudes only.